Hello YouTube, today I'll be showing you how to make a code door with wiring and welcome to Roblox building. So, what we need to do is to make a wall with all of the buttons for this. Now let me just make it kind of pretty. Now, I'm going to have the area with all of the regular input buttons be white. And then we'll have a red button to reset the code and a green block for the go button, I guess you could say. Now, I'm going to use these doorbell buttons uh, because you could click them. Um, time of act doesn't really matter for this, so I'm going to set it to that so it looks nice. So now, we're going to use that memory circuit I showed you in the previous video. Now, what you need to do if you haven't watched it is to get an OR gate and an AND gate and an inverter. Now, I probably should have just pressed them much times because I'm going to need five of them for each of the buttons. So now I'm going to wire them up like I did in that tutorial video. So now that five different memory circuits are done, um, can use this to like uh, store the values from when they press the button. So, I'm going to have the code be uh, not pressing these two buttons and pressing these three. So, the way we're going to do that is um, take an inverter for the two we want to have be not pressed. And I'm going to put them like right here. The placement doesn't matter but I want it to be more indicative of how it is. So now I'm gonna uh, get an OR gate behind the clear button. This button's gonna reset all of the gates and uh, storage, the, the memory circuits, that's what I meant to say. So when they press this, it's gonna trigger the OR gate. Anything that tries to trigger this OR gate is gonna reset all these so we can have different things a reset so now we're gonna take these that we don't want to be pressed down and we're gonna put to here Now all of these memory circuits correspond to one of these buttons, so I'm going to make it power. And we want this clear button to do something, so we'll, get, we'll hook it up to the OR gate that will reset everything. So now you can see from these ending output things. Uh, which ones are pressed and aren't. So I'm gonna press these and you'll see they're powered like that. And once we press this, it resets them all. So I'm using this green button to like, um, like when they press this, it's gonna say, okay, so we're gonna see if what they've entered so far is a uh, code that we want them to have. And if it is, then we're going to open. So I'm going to get down an actual door. And I'm going to have a look here. So we need to like group together all the final values. Um, we're going to take the values from the OR gates with most of these. But the ones that are connected to inverter, we'll take the value from the inverter. Oh wait, that's an OR gate. Need to get an AND gate. 
Um, we can't have multiple inputs for an AND gate, so this is basically just checking um, if all of the ones are the correct value to open the door. Uh, you'll have to like structure the wiring differently if you want to have a different code. Um, I hope you can figure out yourself if I explained it well enough. So, this one's supposed to be off, so I'm going to use the inverter value and put it there. I'm take this and put it there. And that one has an inverter, so we'll use that instead. But first, and we take this one, put it here. Um, I'm not going to use the last one until the final. Um, I don't know what to call it, but I'm gonna do this to stack them up. And now we use this final one. Because it's an odd number, I had to structure it kind of weirdly. Normally it would just be like kind of tr triangle, a right triangle of these AND gates. So we have this final AND gate here. And when we enter the correct code, that final AND gate will be on, and only when we have the correct code. And we have this uh, button right here. So I still want to have a click, um, a small little click of the button, but I want the actual power of it to uh, last a bit longer. So I'll make my own kind of pulse extender, like they do in Minecraft this. You don't, you don't have to have Minecraft knowledge to uh, do this. I'm just saying it's kind of like that. So let me put that together. How you turn this memory circuit into a pulse extender is to just have some sort of a uh, point where one single input goes in. Um, this OR gate's only going to have one input. I'm just doing that to make it clearer. So we have it output to the delay and the OR gate above it. And then we have the delay go to the inverter. And we want this door to stay open for maybe five seconds. So, um, the code is put in correctly already. And once we press this button, that output's going to be on for five seconds. And now we're almost done. We need like one last AND gate here. So when the button is being pressed and the correct code is being put in, then we want to open the door. So let's click it and it worked. So the code's still in there after we press the correct button. So we want to take that final delay right here. We'll put it in this reset OR gate so it resets all the memory after we open the door so other people can't use that code and you can see it gets messed up and now the button doesn't work until we enter the code again so if I enter in incorrect code it won't let me open the door and if we press this button, it'll clear the code and we get to put it back in like that. So that's the code door. Thanks for watching.